Next item we have from Department of Interior Affairs, Real Estate Services. Do the real estate services just start at the beginning? Have real estate services, appraisals, and then the rest is just self gov. So. You have to excuse me, I forgot my glasses, so I'm, I'm driving blind here. Is this one self-governance? Is that what you said? I have real estate services, and then I have appraisals. That's thirty percent, and those are tribal. Oh, okay. The rest of my budgets are self-gov. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They're combined. I don't have that, so. Okay, sorry about that. Continue. Okay. Okay, so you have to give me a minute to get get my thoughts together on that. Okay, so there is an increase in um, for real estate services. There is an increase in salaries due to more duties taken on. Um, we have since taken on the purchasing of property that wasn't a duty. Um, prior to, there's also um, I'm having to hire a few more people. We had completely zeroed out our travel pre-COVID, um, and we added that back in on our budget and training. Um, ESA, we increased that line item because we ran out of money last year. We were about to walk. We had no money for gas. We had we had no money, um, and for fuel. Um, we have licenses and software that we use for um, appraisal comps, for um, county records research, um, PVP Plus, which is another county um, program. All of those software and licenses have went up. And with the more employees that I have, we have to buy more licenses. So that's an increase in our budget. Um, also, there has been a increase in reproduction, which when we go to the counties and make copies, um, we have to get certified copies. And we have to pay per page now. That's a countywide, um, a statewide requirement now. Um, that they're they're charging us um, a dollar per page and another dollar per certification for each page, and so that's 
quite an increase in what we normally pay. So um, I could have those amounts wrong. But yeah, that's pretty much what we have there. I'll be happy to answer any questions. On your contractual, for the actual, uh, why was that one so much? For 22, you had 232 and you had budgeted 75. And you were back to 75. Is that something that's that only happened for this year uh, on the contractual? Let me, let me put my good eye on it. I can't see. Oh. <laughs> oh, contractual, the 75000 mm -hmm. while we increased it? Well, it was, uh, you had it budgeted for 75000 and you, you uh, actual was 232 Oh, yes, go ahead. Okay, all right. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions from committee? Chair, I got one. Yes, go ahead. Or Miss uh, Patricia. Do we have a balanced budget for this year? So if we don't have the funding, where are we going to get that money from? Or through all the whole CAD? For the complete CAD, you've already verified there's funding for each piece. Okay. Is there any way I can get that paperwork? <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Okay. Just. Okay. Well, I, I just had to ask that question. Uh, my worry is I don't want the trial to be upside down and on our head and thinking. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right. Thank you. Questions from committee? Uh, you stated that uh, there were some uh, raises in the, in the, in the, were they all in the all positions or I know there probably won't be any new hires, but uh, no, they weren't in all positions. Some of the positions were based on um, employee evaluations. Some positions received raises last year. We did a reorg of the office, and we have an org chart also in the area. But we did some positions to position. Okay, and all right. raises last year. All right, thank you. Any more questions? Do you have any more budget uh, items you're going through? Do you have any more budget items that you have while you're standing <laughs> standing up here? Sorry. Um, there are just, uh, you know, the other budgets that we have are the appraisals and the land ops, um, and those are all self-govs. Those are all fully funded. Um, the other items that, um, that I have on here are just um, – the contractual, like you said, we, we use those for build and fence where um, that program's up and running and thanks to the council you know, just a few months ago. Um, mm -hmm. And we're 
trying to um, make sure we're hopefully, hopefully next year the property taxes will go down. We put quite a bit of property in trust, so that's what our that's what our main goal is right now, to you know eliminate at some point that whole property tax line item, so that it will hopefully go down next year. Okay. Any more questions? Chair, I'll make a motion to approve real estate services. Motion been made by Representative Hicks to approve the real estate services. Second by Representative McHenry. Roll call. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Nelson Hardo. Yes. Galen Cloud. Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes. Thank you. Okay, next we have is Conservation District. Good evening. Good evening. This budget is the for three hundred thousand. It's funded by legislation and uh, includes two uh, positions. Uh, all other positions funded in our um, office are by grants. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but. Uh... What was your name? My name is Julie Norm. Okay. Is this budget, uh, is this the one that used to uh, be on, uh, Patricia? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Questions from committee? No questions. Need a motion. Chair, I make a motion to approve. Motion the... made by Representative Hicks to approve. Second. Seconded by Representative McHenry. Roll call, please. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Nelson Harjo. Yes. Galen Cloud. Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. you. Next, we have is geospatial. Good evening. Good evening. You have an increase in your budget? Yeah, so we, we did have an increase. We talked to principal chief and second chief and others about the increase in terms of uh, the salary stuff uh, we had, you know, mainly to get the uh, staff an increase on, on kind of bringing them up at least to what the uh, others were making in our area in terms of other uh, GIS analysts. We've kind of had a situation where we've had turnover the last two or three years, and it's been something that's been hard to replace some of those uh, kind of assets that we've built in, in terms of investments of training and other things that we've put into them. And uh, we're just trying to keep them um, here and, you know, kind of keep qualified people on staff. So 
we asked kind of for this increase, uh, this one-time increase um, as part of our budget. So that, that's kind of what we, we put in here. And that's mainly for the, the staff only on, on that one. Um, we did also ask an increase uh, for software licenses because the software programs that we are using, um, the licenses cost is increasing and, um, and in terms of what we're paying on an annual basis. Uh, we do try to offset some of the costs that we do have with other grants that our department runs, but um, again, the, just the overall increase in cost is kind of catching up with us a little bit. Um, the other kind of increase as well was um, in contractual. So we had a big increase there because uh, what we're doing is partnering with MCOG um, and they're doing uh, flights over uh, Creek County, Tulsa County, and Wagner County, and they've offered us kind of a, a way to kind of partner with them on some of these aerial imagery uh, captures. And in doing so, we they kind of set a price of what we could kind of pay to participate on an annual basis or biannual basis, depending on how often they actually go out there and do the flights. So those are kind of the, the and then supplies as well. Um, some of our ink and large format pl uh, plotters that we do have, just the cost, general cost, and kind of has increased on that as well. And, you know, we're basically serving all the uh, departments and all the other agencies that the tribe has with, you know, we don't charge them anything in terms of what we do. So we kind of provide it as a service to them, but we don't recoup any of our costs for what we do in terms of our services. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Questions from committee? No questions? Any motion? Chair, I make a motion to approve. Motion been made by Representative Hicks to approve. Second. Second by Representative McHenry. Roll call vote, please. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Hardell? Yes. Jalen Cloud? Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Next we have is the Secretary of Interior Affairs. Sure. Evening. So for the Office of Secretary of Interior Affairs, um, it's uh, straightforward from uh, last year. Um, actually, we uh, decreased um, the travel from last year, uh, quite a few more. Uh, Teleconference and those type of conferences now than you know, previous. So we reduce that. So uh, actually, the budget is lower than it was last year for the Secretary of Interior Affairs position. Do you have any increases in any? Any anything at all? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Questions? You have one in uh, position, the, the wildlife technician. Is that when the, is that position field? Okay, so the wildlife techni technician, that program is uh, managed by uh, Agri Natural Resources over Trent Kissy. So he's going to address that when he comes up. On, okay. He's the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
I was just looking at my interior affairs okay. uh, budget. Yeah, I think I got the wrong sheet in my. <laughs> that's my fault. I got the okay. wrong sheet in here. Yeah. <clears throat> no questions. Need a motion. Make a motion to approve. Motion been made by Representative Henry to approve. Second. Seconded by Representative Cloud. Roll call. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Galen Cloud? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. Their motion passes. Okay, Mark's here. Let me check with him. That's your eight. Your eight is over here. Five, 22. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Next we have. Yes, we have one in the budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more that's your? Uh, yes, so we have the uh, oil and gas. Okay. Yeah. I believe that's. Um, so, after speaking with uh, Chief uh, um, Cabinet, uh, AG's office, uh, Realty, uh, we believe there is a, a strong need to. Um, to set aside and create a, uh, a separate oil and gas department, um, and you know, based on NCA thirteen, you know, two six six, which was passed, which created the oil and gas department, uh, we would like to you know revive that and um, and fund um, the oil and gas department as a, a separate uh, department within Interior Affairs. So I have proposed a a budget which would include a oil and gas manager, uh, travel. Um, supplies, uh, conference seminars, um, licenses, software, um, and also uh, vehicles and equipment, which we could utilize the uh, GSA uh, lease uh, for um, for the vehicles. Um, so, and uh, I believe everyone is uh, is very uh, encouraged uh, by this department. I spoke with the uh, AG's office uh, last week uh, regarding this, and we think there's some can be some good collaboration uh, between the two uh, offices there. <clears throat> Any questions? And the position you have there is the oil and gas manager. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Maybe a new position. Any questions from committee? Chairman, Speaker Lowe. Uh, yes, go ahead. But, oh, Chair, hello, Jesse. Good evening. Thanks for being here. Sure. You know, I get the executive branch is excited about oil and gas, possible manager or department. Yep. When can the council actually be involved in that? Say that again. When can the actual council be involved in the creation or the mission, vision? of the oil and gas department? Well, um, according to NCA 13-266, it laid out the legislation for that already. So that's that's the framework that we have to go by. Uh, but if we bring in the uh, manager, I believe we can even further implement that even further. Um, okay. And I've already been speaking with the AG's office about expanding and how, what we can do. So obviously we would always come to a council right. for that. Was there somebody already hired? Did we not talk about that in the email previously? No. Man, I may be confused with no, that. But yeah, if when you hire somebody, it'd be great if the council could meet them. That way, he or she, that way we can kind of find out what's going on because yes, we, we only hear from outside or Facebook. So yes, I sir. just want to be involved more. Okay. I appreciate you. Obviously. Mado Chair. All right. Thank you. Any more questions, comments? Oil and gas. Sure, I have a motion. motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion been made to approve by Representative Cloud. Second. Second by Representative McHenry. Roll call. Galen Cloud. Yes. Joseph Hicks. Just comment real quick before I vote. Uh, I'd really love to see this legislation before I enact on this or get a yes for it. So at this time, 
I can't support it, so I don't have to know. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Chair, you have three in favor, one against. Three in favor, one against. That motion passes. Approval for oil and gas for FY budget 23. All right. Thank you. Is that right there? Oh, right here. Where's it at? I was just wondering why it was on there. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Kazee, let's see what, what you have. Good evening, Chairman, to the committee. Um, so I've got three tribal budgets here. Um, I gave Tracy a handout. I included self-gov budgets in here in case there are any questions, but uh, the three tribal budgets I have are the Division of Ag and Natural Resources budget, um, and it is it is expanded, so I'm happy to talk about that. Um, and then the Country Club budget, or with the Wildlife Technician, um, I have that one as well. That's probably the most straightforward. It's a flat budget. Um, Division of Ag and Natural Resources, um, quote unquote, took over that program. We'd been um, helping with some of the maintenance and upkeep, um, and then there was no longer a full-time employee out there, so of course we've been haying it and mowing it and things like that. Um, Jacob, our wildlife biologist, and then Brooklyn, who's been our wildlife tech, um, as a contractual laborer, have been doing a lot of work out there to sort of develop an eco-park, so they've mowed walking trails and have been doing a lot of pollinator habitats out there, and the, the vision for that is to eventually add um, frisbee golf and archery range, um, educational signs with with both wetland and and dryland species and um, a little bit about them and the creek name for those those critters as well so um, we're really excited about that project again we've been sort of doing the maintenance and upkeep of it um, anyway for about the past year really the only change to that budget you'll see is we've we've increased the supply line item we've decreased contractual and then we've put salary and fringe um, and indirect into the budget to bring Brooklyn over as a full-time employee so that's the that's the country club budget <clears throat> or the one on your sheet that says wildlife technician okay the show's quiet now the one the chairman asked about when jesse was up about wildlife technician mm -hmm. on the on the sheet that i gave you tracy it says country club up at the top i think it's the second budget sheet you'll see page four Our goal with that property, I should add, is just to do, you know, minimal type management of that in case the nation ever has an economic opportunity or something come up. There's not a ton of infrastructure out there that we'll have to then undo having spent money on. So um, a lot of what we're going to be doing is sort of minimally, minimally invasive, um, working with cultural pres and environmental, making sure we're not doing anything too ground disturbing. There's a, are a couple of wetlands out there and ponds already there um, that we're hoping to clean up and start stocking that pond so the citizens can go fish. Um, again, we're going to have the walking trail out there. We've got two loops. One is one's significantly longer than the other. So we're hoping the elders and folks that um, need to have a good uh, safe space to go and exercise can do so. Um, we've got the pass mode down really low. Um, we'll probably install a gravel parking lot. So that's what some of that supply line item is for. Again, minimally invasive. That way, if, if the nation ever decides to utilize that property for something else, it's not money that we've poured into it and have to undo a bunch of work. All right, anybody have any questions? All right, continue. Sure. Um, the budget behind that would be my Ag Youth budget. It's another tribal budget. Um, it's, it's expanded a little bit. We've gone from around 200 to 215 students to over 300 students. Um, we, we consistently try to increase programming. We've added the archery camp. Um, now an all Indian shooting sports contest. Our livestock show is back up in participation. Of course, it dropped with COVID, but the year prior and then this past year were significantly larger shows. Um, 
Billy's gone from, you know, he, he typically had one event. Now he's trying to do one large event per quarter. So we're helping U.S. Fish and Wildlife comes and helps put on our archery um, camp in the summer, which is great. We had almost 100 kids out there this summer, and it was 110 degrees. I mean, they're out there in July learning how to, to do archery. Of course, that supports our archery programming, which is built into this budget as well. Um, again, we have the All Indian Shooting Sports Contest, which supports both shotgun sports and archery for those students that are competing. Um, and then we have the livestock show as well. So um, kind of expanding our programming, doing a lot more educational work, but the primary increases in here are going to be um, in that livestock purchases line. That, that incentive um, has been $500 per student for as long as Billy's been here. We're, we increased that to 700 this past year to, to cover a lot more of the expenses. You know, $500 just wasn't covering what it was once. And so we did increase that benefit. So some of that's built into there. Um, and then Representative Hicks and I were visiting earlier. Um, you'll, you'll notice a slight um, salary increase on Billy's um, salary. It's nothing too significant. It's about in line with what he would get if he was an ag ed teacher in the annual steps. But the primary reason for that is on the DANR budget here in a minute, um, you'll see there's a position called Ag Youth and Extension. And so Billy will be given more supervisory responsibilities as that person will kind of come in to support both the Ag Youth side of his programming and then the extension work, which would be our um, citizen facing work that we would do. So helping citizens with their land and their properties and uh, what they might be able to do economically, soil tests, things like that. We get a lot of questions about that, um, especially with the meat plant. So that person would be helping citizens get their products labeled to be able to sell at the meat plant if they have a sauce or a salsa or something like that. So um, his, his increase is primarily due to his role um, changing and becoming more of a supervisory role as well. All right, all right, thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> all right, continue. In the, the Division of Ag and Natural Resources budget, um, they're the first budget on your page. That's the one that's got um, some expansion to it. There's a few new positions. Um, we've done some restructuring and some reshuffling, as you can imagine, with the MECO and, and quadrupling the size of the ranch and, and kind of increasing the wildlife programming. Um, we've had a lot shake up in the past couple of years, and so this sort of brings us more up to date. Um, Amy, who was, prime, who was before the office manager, she's now a, an account specialist, and so she's been doing that for about the past year, which um, has been great, working with finance to get our bills paid on time, for the, especially the plant. Um, you know, working as, as an economic, economic entity, uh, the turnaround on those bills is a lot quicker. Um, and that's something the that finance has been great work with Amy, making sure that they're paid on time. You know, we, we don't get much of a grace period from the, some of those distributors. A couple of our meat vendors are, uh, they want five to seven days turnaround on an order they want paid. Um, and she's been instrumental in that. The amount of purchase orders she does is, is, is crazy, but she does a great job. So she's going to primarily be focusing on our budgets and making sure that we're um, spending, we, we get a ton of grant funds as well, making sure that we're spending that well, um, drawing down as we're supposed to and staying in compliance. That's really gonna be more of her role. So we'll be adding an administrative assistant to help with more of the clerical work. Um, we have a natural resources specialist one that's already on there. The wildlife program coordinator, you will see an increase there. Um, done a great job for us, been a, been a really vital employee. Um, revamped the wildlife code, added the conservation regulations, and the reason for the increase there is they're going to take on more of a program coordinator role for the whole division, helping out with other with other entities, as well as some supervisory activities because the wildlife technician in the country club budget will report through uh, the wildlife coordinator at that point. So they'll be having some managerial responsibilities there. Um, uh, the, at the Natural Resources Specialist 3 is something we're really excited about. We're hoping to be able to enroll um, a lot of the nation's properties into some of these green programs and even help create some of these programs. So that position will work um, kind of hand in hand with environmental and then the, um, the other agencies that oversee kind of enrolling stuff into carbon credits. It's sort of a new market, um, but, but the nation really is, is poised to benefit from some of those with all the timber that we have out there and all the things that are already sequestering carbon there. Um, and so that's what that position will be primarily tasked with is enrolling, making sure that our programs and, and uh, conservation efforts are set up so that we can benefit from that. Um, and then eventually, if we get to the point where we're able to help um, support other programs, whether that's Realty or, or some other program that faces the citizens with individual landowners, then they would, they would do that as well. Um, and then the Ag Youth Extension Specialist, like I mentioned before, um, that would be mirrored a lot off of the extension specialist you would see like in the county, but it would be for, for Muscogee Creek citizens. Um, this person would help support Billy. You know, Billy, Billy has, again, increased his programming significantly, and he's the only one. Um, 300 students for an Ag teacher, that would be a three teacher program if this was an ag, if he was an ag teacher, um, there would be three teachers to support his work. Um, and I used to be an ag teacher and I had, I was a two teacher program and my, I had 87 students in my classes. 
So Billy just does a tremendous amount of work. He's always helping um, haul kids' livestock, clip them, help them with their feeding. I mean, he does an outstanding job. So this person would support his work, and then this person would help support um, citizen-facing services such as helping them develop their properties, um, helping them get their products labeled if it's something we could sell at the Meatco or, or elsewhere. Um, so that, that, that position would be twofold, sort of like the ones you see at the, at the county extension office. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? All right, continue. That's all I've got. Okay. The the, the self-gov budgets, happy to discuss those, but the, the next three budgets are self-gov, um, self-governance funds. I've got the natural resources and fencing, which is a flat budget. Um, I've got the ranch ARPA budget on here, which you guys have already approved. I just wanted to include that in case there are any questions about why I didn't bring a ranch budget. Mm -hmm. um, so that's already approved. And then the uh, Loop Square Meat Company budget, I included that in the back as well. It's because it was on the list, but it is self-gov funds. Okay. Any questions concerning any of the budget? Any motion? Chair, I make a motion to approve. Motion approved by Representative Hicks. <clears throat> Second by Representative McHenry. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Nelson Harjo. Yes. Galen Cloud. Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes. My question is, are we the country club, Aggies, and the DAR, all three at the same time? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, next item we have is federal roads. Good afternoon. Um, our budget is uh, basically the same as it is, was last year. It's federally funded. We're not asking for anything. One thing we will be changing is I'm planning on bringing the force account back, bringing four employees, which we have funding for. Um, other than that, there's nothing, no different. Okay. The force account was still in the budget, you were saying, uh, part of the budget. Yeah, we just moved it. This first year will be used ARPA money for their salary this first year, and their money, the money's still in the budget for the following years to come. Okay. Any questions from committee? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This one should already be approved. Is that correct? Yes. All right. We shouldn't have to uh, act on that one since it's already been approved. <clears throat> All right. Next we uh, next item. Thank you, sir. Oh, let me look and see what I got here. 
tribal construction. Good evening, representatives. Good evening. Any uh, any changes on your budget? Uh, the, there's uh, there's not been any increase. It's still at about approximately two point five million. There's not any changes in it. Uh, probably about twenty three positions out there. Uh, we currently probably have around sixteen right now. We're looking to add the vacants to fill it up, which is approximately about seven. Any questions from committee? Chair, make a motion to approve. Motion be made by Rep. <coughs> Representative Hicks to approve. Second. Second by Representative Henry. Roll call. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Nelson Harjo. Yes. Jalen Cloud. Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes and approved for FY23. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next item we have is tribal, I can't read this. Tribal construction, life and safety. Yes, sir. <laughs> No change on this item from last year. Uh, should be a straight across budget from the previous year. Mm -hmm. Same position, same, same everything. Yes, yep. Single position, no additional positions. Mm -hmm. uh, same uh, funding for contractual services and maintenance. Okay. Questions? All right, go ahead. Chair, make a motion to approve tribal construction, life and safety. Motion be made, Representative Hicks, to approve tribal construction, life and safety budget. Second. Second by Representative McHenry. Roll call. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Nelson Harjo. Yes. Jalen Cloud? Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes for FY23. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Next we have is tribal driveways. Evening, everyone. Um, Good evening. The biggest changes are in the personnel department. Uh, I propose to add two positions, two operator positions for the program. Um, that's the biggest increase. Um, another mm -hmm. increase, not as big as we increased our fuel line item from 100,000 to 150,000. Um, Really, that's the two biggest increases for the program. Everything else is the same. Mm -hmm. And you said you were adding two positions, that correct? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, proposing two <clears throat> positions, two operator positions. Okay. All right, thank you. Questions? No questions. Chair, make a motion to approve. Motion made by Representative Cloud to approve Se tribal driveways budget. Seconded by Representative McHenry. Roll call. Galen Cloud. Yes. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Nelson Harjo. Yes. 
Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes for FY23. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Environmental Services. Good evening, Council. Good evening, Speaker. First up is my uh, motor vehicle uh, budget. It's increased by one thousand uh, dollars. We do have a meeting in Tulsa at the River Spirit, and charging me a little more now. It went from three thousand to four thousand, but other than that, everything stayed the same. Okay. All right. Any questions on that? Next one is waste disposal. Mm -hmm. All right. Continue. That's gone up just a little bit, just uh, due to the uh, fuel prices. Uh, we went from seven thousand to twenty thousand dollars, and then our tipping fees. Uh, we went up. We had to go up about ten thousand dollars on them. Our tipping fees are costing us a little more at uh, uh, landfills. Other than that, those are the only two increases. Any questions from committee? You got the uh, same positions there? Yes. Okay. All right, continue. Then the um, same thing on the refuse uh, recovery. Uh, the the fuel went up, uh, and I think that's the only thing on here that we went up on. That's it, just a fuel, and it was up uh, about thirteen thousand dollars just to get by. Position salary is the same? Same. Yep. Stay the same. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Any motion? Chair, I make a motion to approve environmental services. Motion been made by Representative Hicks to approve environmental services FY23 budget. Second. Taken by Representative McHenry. Roll call. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Galen Cloud. Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, All Council. Right. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> in your documents, you have. All right, next we have is Cultural Center and Archives. I'm here. There you go. <laughs> you have any uh, changes in your budget? Yes, there is an increase at 55582 Um Last year we got a supplemental appropriation for the Muskogee Art Market budget. And um, we're asking this to be um, as part of our actual budget. Is that in a project activity? Um, will it come out of project activity? Yes. Okay. Any other changes? Um, we have increase in sal salaries for four of the positions. Three of them, they've all had their um, yearly evaluations. Three of them are step free increases. Um, John John's position, just recognizing him for all of his work that he continues to do, um, but he'll also have more of a maintenance role and overs oversight of a council house. It's a 144-year-old building, so we're constantly having some issue with it, and 
you can fix a lot of the issues. Um, like we've had issues with air conditioning and um, because of his skill sets, he can go in and handle those himself. Okay. Questions? Any questions? All right, you have another uh, budget, Tegan? Um, we have the Red State Gallery one that's a revolving fund. Okay. The funds are already there. Um, but if, I mean, it's hard to say if anything remains the same because it's just depend on what's there. But um, out of that, we purchase items to sell in the in Red State Gallery. Um, profits that we make, we move to acquisition line items. So if anyone has collections that they'd like to sell or, or um, that's how we acquire those. We also have a project activity line item. Um, so when we do projects like some of the prize money for the art market, we did supplement those with that with that budget. So any money we get from Red State pretty much goes back to the artists um, and other avenues. So your budget is 95938? That's what it was at the time that we did this budget. Okay. And no salary comes out of that one. Okay. All right. Questions? Is that all you have with yours? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion has been made by Representative McHenry to, to approve the Cultural Center and Archives FY23 budget, seconded by Rep Representative Cloud. Roll call, please. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Galen Cloud? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, <laughs> zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have is Arbor Care. But you remain the same as last year. Uh, no increases? Of, no, sir. Okay. okay, any questions on Arbor? Arbor care. Chair, I make a motion to approve Arbor care. Motion made by Representative Hicks to approve FY23 budget Arbor care. Second. Second by Representative Henry. Uh, you got risk management also, don't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll go ahead and continue with risk management. And it's the same as last year, too. No changes on uh, risk management uh, budget. Any, any questions from, from committee? Chair, I make a motion to approve risk management 2023 budget. Motion be made to approve the risk management FY23 budget. 
Representative Hicks, approved, uh, seconded by Representative McHenry. And this would be a voting on harbor care, care and risk management. Roll call. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Jalen Cloud? Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. The motion passes. Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Next we have is emergency management. Oh, Bobby Harrison. All right, we'll skip that one for the moment. Okay, transit. Are there any changes on that uh, emergency management, uh, Ms. Killian? Okay. Chair, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Bobby Howard did contact me. I think he thought Hugh was here in his budget. So he told Representative Deer versus you that he was in D.C. today. Okay. But it's the same. We already approved his budget since he did a, didn't he have an appropriation not too long ago? So we actually did officially approve his budget. Sir. Okay. But okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. Okay. That budget has been approved. Thank you for that. All right. Transit. Good evening, uh, Good evening, Chairman, Committee. Um, we're here for the Charter Service budget. There has been no change to the budget. Uh, speak into the mic, please. There has been, uh, we're here for the Charter budget, and there has been uh, no change to his budget. Okay. Uh, Charter Services, the uh, 150. Uh, 150,000, is that the oh, one? Oh, that is the transit program oh, transit, income. okay. Yes. That, would you? that is still the same. Okay. Well, charter service is what you were... Yes. Okay. But no changes. No changes okay. there either. All right. Any questions? Okay, what else do you have? Uh, that's that's, that's it? it? That's all the ones you have? Okay. Mm -hmm. All of transits is uh, federal. Oh, it's I got already, you. Yes. You're right. <laughs> uh, no changes on the further service and the rest is uh, federal, federally funded. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, That's charter. That's charter, and there's been no change. Oh. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, we have. Uh, so no position changes or uh, increases no, or anything. There. Okay. No, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Questions from committee. All right, need a motion? Chair, sure, make a motion to approve transit. Motion. <laughs> motion been made by Representative Hicks to approve uh, transit and further services. Seconded by Representative Cloud. Hmm. Roll call. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Hartjo? Yes. Galen Cloud? Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes the FY23 budget. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cultural preservation is next, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, cultural preservation.
Good evening, Chairman. Good evening. And Council. Uh, my name is Raylan Butler, and I serve as a manager of the Historic and Cultural Preservation Department. We have uh, one budget. It's a gaming budget, or tribal budget. Um, the main increase we have is in our personnel. We're looking to add three new positions to our department as soon as possible. We um, want to expand our culture resource survey capabilities. We want to hire another archaeologist. We also want to hire two cultural technicians to get more citizens. It's an entry level position for somebody to learn more about the National Historic Preservation Act and reviewing projects in our homelands. We get um, 100 pieces of mail every day and we're overwhelmed with a number of requests that come in asking us, you know, is this project going to impact Muskogee sacred places or cemeteries? And so we we're, we're, want to add these positions to help accommodate the needs of these requests that come in and to ensure that we're being compliant with federal preservation laws. Um, they'll also be cross-trained to help us do um, NAGPRA, the Native American Graves Protection Repatriation Act, help us do reburials, help us do cultural outreach. Um, one of the title changes we wanted to do um, was to actually have a cultural coordinator, outreach coordinator, someone who can help us uh, develop um, curriculum for younger kids. You know, um, for example, talking about Trail of Tears is, is difficult with elementary school kids, but we wanna try to get more educational materials for younger kids um, to do more in, in school trainings. Um, a lot of schools call and ask for storytelling. We want to try to accommodate those requests and work with the um, education and training department to, you know, combine resources to work together. But just really those positions will help grow our library and archives and outreach cap capacity, but also our survey work that we do for the nation. There are um, more and more construction projects happening on the reservation, and we want to survey those lands to make sure that there are no graves that are impacted or any kind of um, archaeological sites, um, cemeteries, things like that. So that's the, the main increase in our budget. Everything else has stayed the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We have any questions from committee? I got one. Chair. Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> Ms. Ray Lynn, on it shows on the budget your uh, salary and wages. On one, it's full time. The other one, there's a part time. What exactly is that one, if you don't mind? We have two part time positions. One is a part time office clerk. Um, she helps scan in our, um, she used to be a NACOA worker. She helps scan in um, our mail and helps digitize a lot of the correspondence we have with federal agencies to keep as a backup. Um, the other part time is we want to, our librarian um, is retiring this Friday and um, we're thinking she's going to come back part time later. So we'd, we would really like to keep her and her knowledge. She helped build the library we have and um, but she is also ready to retire. So we want to keep a part time position open for librarian. Um, and hope that she might come back later to help us. The librarian is an important position, but it's not as, um, we don't have many people coming in every day asking for those kind of requests. So we, we feel comfortable making it, taking it from full-time to part-time. Um, but the other needs are more immediate and we're getting constant requests. So that's why we want to focus more on expanding the other areas of the program. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you. Any more questions? Chairman Speaker Lope. Uh, yes, go ahead. My old chair. Uh, I just got a comment, really. You know, I see the salary increase for the manager having the max of 68, 66, 810. To me, I feel as an HR professional that what you actually do, you and your department, I mean, you all are the future of our tribe and our existence. So you tell the story, keep us impacted everything Muskogee. So I don't know how it can be done, but I know there was some salary increase concern with all the increases that are going on within these budgets, but I would really like to see you at 70 grand. That's just my opinion because 
I see that the salary is maxed at 66 eight ten, but I think we can do better than that, especially with what you do and what you've done for us. So, Chairman, that's all I wanted to say. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, Representative Cloud. Uh, on the, uh, is there any, uh, are you gonna hire for any more cemetery crew uh, personnel there? Um, the cemetery crew right now, we have a cemetery crew leader and three co-workers. What we wanna do is create an assistant leader position um, to give a raise and then have two um, workers. So we're still gonna have four, but have an opportunity for additional leadership uh, role. All right, thank you. We are working with education and training. They have helped us hire on part-time, or not part-time, but through their, um, it, I guess, work program. We currently have one person working that the education and training helps pay for and we hope to hire him on full time. He's been doing a great job. I, I just like to say that, uh, I mean, your department is uh, like what Speaker Lowe was talking about. You know, you guys are like the backbone here. I mean, like your hist our history down there. So appreciate everything you do down there. But no. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any more questions, comments? All right. Need motion. Make a motion has been made by Representative McHenry to approve the cultural preservation budget FY23. Thank you. Thank you by Representative Cloud. Roll call. Charles McHenry. Yes. Nelson Harjo. Yes. Galen Cloud. Yes. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Chairman, you have four in favor, zero against. Four in favor and zero against. That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the Department of Interior Affairs. Uh